I find it funny that in 2011, millions of people still take horoscopes seriously. As a species, we have been to the moon, explored the solar system, and discovered an amazing amount about the universe. Yet some of us believe that planets millions of miles away, and stars trillions of miles away, affect our personality and daily lives. In order to understand astrology, we need to understand a few basic astronomical concepts. Once you get your head around some of the astronomy, you will see how a lot of the astrology, particularly horoscopes, is riddled with nonsense. You should all be familiar with the twelve star signs of the zodiac, but what does it mean to say that someone is a Capricorn? Well, if you were born on the 25th of December, 2000 years ago, the Sun would have been in the constellation of Capricorn. This means that if the Sun wasn't in the way, you'd see Capricorn. It takes the Earth one year to orbit the Sun, and we always go in the same direction and on the same plane, which means that the Sun is always in front of one out of the twelve zodiacal constellations, man-made patterns in the distant stars. There are 88 constellations or groupings of stars in the night sky, 12 of which are in a band known as the ecliptic. They only look the way they do from our solar system. If we were to travel to other star systems, the patterns would be different, more so the further away we went. So the idea that the constellations have an actual effect on us is absurd. It is better to think of them as markers, similar to the numbers on a clock, merely an indication of the sun's apparent location. The star signs, as those who are familiar with horoscopes will know, change at about the 20th of each month. The 21st of March is an important date because it is the vernal or spring equinox, the point where day and night are of equal length and the northern hemisphere is approaching its summer. In the past, the year began at the spring equinox. The month September used to be the seventh month of the year, October the 8th, November the 9th. The Earth is tilted at 23.5 degrees to the plane of its orbit. The polar axis is always pointing at the same point in the sky, at least on the scale of a human lifetime. The North Pole points to the star Polaris and the South Pole points close to the Southern Cross. Because of this 23.5 degree tilt, we have noticeable seasons, which makes it easy to tell one year from the next. Now we come to where modern astrologers are wrong. The vernal equinox changes over time because the Earth's axis wobbles or precesses and describes a large circle which takes about 25,920 years to describe a complete circle. So the vernal or spring equinox precesses or moves backwards through the signs of the zodiac in what is referred to as an astrological age. Each age lasts for about 2,160 years, which interestingly and coincidentally is the moon's diameter in miles. So we are at the end of the age of Pisces and coming into the age of Aquarius. The astrological age depends only on the apparent position of the sun at every spring equinox. But if you look up your horoscope, you will see that it hasn't been updated for over 2000 years. So your actual birth sign and your horoscope sign are askew by one sign. I'm a Pisces, but I should be an Aquarius. Aries are actually Pisces, and so on. The idea that the position of the planets makes any difference at all is rather tenuous. The gravitational effect is almost vanishingly small. Even Jupiter, the most massive planet by far, is so far away that it takes light almost an hour to travel that distance, never mind any other effect. The Sun, however, does affect us with radiation and the strong gravity which holds us in a stable orbit. I have heard it said that sunspot cycles and the magnetic fields from the sun affect us on 11-year and 4-monthly cycles. 
and that this might explain some astrological claims. I'm not sure whether this is an avenue of pseudoscience or not, but I may come back to this in future videos. So to summarize, I would agree with Carl Sagan that astrology is bunk, particularly in terms of daily horoscopes, but I wouldn't dismiss the possibility that solar radiation has some sort of effect upon us. How could it possibly work? How could the rising of Mars at the moment of my birth affect me, then or now? I was born in a closed room. Light from Mars couldn't get in. The only influence of Mars which could affect me was its gravity. But the gravitational influence of the obstetrician was much larger than the gravitational influence of Mars.